Hey everyone, welcome to this episode in the Burp for Beginners series. Today we're going to be talking about how to use Repeater. Now, Repeater is a tool in Burp that you'll probably use for the majority of your bug hunting. It's really versatile. It's really where you do most of your exploring um, and really how you interact quite a lot with web app uh, pen testing. So I'm going to talk to you today about how to use Repeater. This is part of a, an, an ongoing series. So I'm going to be talking about all the key tools in Burp and some other little Burp fun tips and tricks. And once again, this video is very kindly sponsored by Integrity. Um, and in case you missed it, they're very kindly offered to sponsor some videos on my channel. If you're unaware of them, they're a bug bounty platform. So we think of like Hacker One and Bug Crowd, but Integrity focuses on European customers more than kind of global. Um, they're definitely a smaller platform, but actually that's quite an advantage because they're always interacting on social media. They're always replying to hackers. They're always sorting problems. They're already always trying to interact with the community. And actually for quite a small platform, they have quite a wide range of targets to look at. Oh, whoops. Um, that you might not actually find on other platforms, especially considering the amount of hackers is a lot smaller. Um, actually, they have a really wide range of targets. And they also run XSS challenges. You can test your skills, they give you some prizes. So even if you're not at the level that you'll feel ready to attack a real target, you can still interact, still use it. Um, but you know me, I am all about giving back to the community. And actually, this is why I'm so happy to work with them because they really do give back to the community not just in sponsoring my videos, but also investing in other creators as well. And they're really letting me create the content I already make without pushing me to really make focused content for them. So I don't take having a sponsorship lightly. Uh, so I really want you to know that any advertisers on my channel are very carefully considered and I really do like Integrity's offering. Um, and actually you guys do too. So everyone who's already signed up, thank you. It really does help me um, and Thank you to people who told me they found their first bug on Integrity. They're bug hunting and they found things. And it makes me really happy that I can have an advertiser on my channel and actually you like it. <laughs> because obviously being sponsored for me helps me invest more into the channel. For example, I bought an entire audio setup so I could really solve an issue that a lot of people found kind of distracting about my channel and my videos. So actually partnering with them really does not just help me, but I'm glad it also has helped you in finding bugs and stuff like that. So thank you very much for um, sponsoring me Integrity. If you want to sign up, the link, my link is go.integrity.com forward slash Katie. Um, and that's where you can sign up for an account. So let's get on with the show. What is Burp? Now, if you missed my previous video, I did an introductory video to what Burp is. Um, but I'm just going to do a quick refresher. So Burp is a proxy and it sits between you and the internet. But usually when we think about proxies, we're thinking about like avoiding a firewall, for example, that's at school, right? You want to play like your flash games at school, you search for proxy and see which ones work. Um, but you send, in the case of Burp, you send all of your traffic through Burp. And that just means you can see what your web browser is doing, what requests it's sending, what responses it's getting. And the really important thing about that is that you can then resend requests. You can send new ones, um, change them, intercept them before they're sent. Um, and it, like, it has a bunch of other features, but those are the core functionality that we're going to be using. And today we're going to be talking about changing requests. So what is Repeater? Now this is Burp over here. Get my little laser pointer. And as you can see, we have these tabs. Uh, we have dashboard, target, proxy, intruder, repeater. We're just going to be focusing on repeater and target today, today, because this will this is kind of how we mainly interact with a uh, a website using Burp. So repeater allows us to repeat requests, but also modify them before they're sent. Um, we use it primarily to do initial testing, sometimes to validate results. It really ends up being our primary tool. So we're asking questions like, okay, what if I add new parameters to something? Can I change the parameters? Can I access other API resources? What happens if I remove the cookie? And we're really looking not just at this kind of one tool that does one thing. We use it for so many different things. And it's really important to become very familiar with repeater and really not be scared of it. Um, so why do we repeat requests? Now, we really have one question we want to answer when we use repeater. 
Does the response change? If it does, how does it change? Why does it change? Is this a security risk? We want to make a change and then see, you know, what the response is. Is this something useful? Like in this case, you know, we've done some kind of query over here and we've got query results. Now, we might be thinking, okay, if we can use access uh, media objects, can we access something else? And then we'll go back to our request, see what we can change about it and see if we can in influence what it says. So that's kind of the theory. Um, really, this video is going to be mostly a demo. So let's get on with the demo. I see you in a folks in a minute while I just get set up. Okay, and we are back with our demo. So we've got burp set up here. Um, and we've got in Firefox our target, which is mail.yahoo.com. Um, so we're going to reload the page, and as we can see immediately, it doesn't work um, because Burp's proxy tab intercept needs to be turned off. So we turned off intercept, and we get to here. So we've got basically an inbox. Um, if we go to our target, we can see we've loaded a bunch of URLs. The first thing to do is to filter out the URLs we're not interested in. Um, so really we're looking at mail.yahoo.com. We've also got data. So we're going to go there. We're going to go um, scope, use advanced scope control, sitemap, add to scope in here. And let's just get everything that is gone mail. So we'll do dot plus and then mail.yahoo.com. And this will then show us only ones related to Yahoo Mail. I think I want to do a star for optional instead of plus. We should now see yeah, mail.yahoo.com. Okay, so now we've got that. We're only seeing these two related to Yahoo Mail domains, essentially. Um, and what we want to do when we use repeater is really have requests to repeat. So the best way to do it is to play with user interaction. So we're going to write a new email. Um, we might then reply to an email. Maybe we'll have some formatting in there, right? Um, we might move it to a folder or maybe create a new folder. Um, we might then move it to there. We might sit here and go, okay, delete that email go to deleted items to get get it and then restore it. So we're really just testing the user interactions here. It's running a little bit slow because my internet is not doing so great. We can wait. Um, so, okay, what are we actually hitting? So if we open up this, uh, we can see we're actually hitting quite a few uh, endpoints here. Um, but actually the one we're interested in is WS version 3 batch and then this is everything to do with interacting with an email inbox. So we have syncing, creating folders, get bodies of messages, save and send, post launch, post sync, another save and send. So the first thing I want to do is maybe just see what we can do with the endpoints we have. So we'll go here, send to repeater, and we can see there's a bunch of like cookies in there but actually if we go down here we can see we've got like create folders, we've got a URI, we've got a method. But well, the first thing I might want to test out is maybe just changing a folder, calling it something out. Right, go here, go back to this, and we can see that it's worked, presumably, since there's some results. And you say success, success result requests. So we might go back and maybe have a look at our folders. We can see maybe we don't have a folder yet. So we might like see, okay, why is that happening? What about it means that that happened? Um, do we need to do something else at the same time? Uh, so we might see, oh, there it is. So now it's a pit. So we know that this request creates a new folder and we can actually just modify that to create whatever folder we want. So we're gonna go up here and we're gonna call that create folder. And here we go, we know that that will always create a folder. Um, and we will go back here and see if we can send an email. So we can see here, messages get body full. I'm assuming that's getting a message. 
Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, there's something in there where you get get some content. I wonder if we can send a message though. We're probably looking for save and send. So we'll go send to repeater. And we'll go down here. And we can see here that we've got like everything we need for a message. Um, and we can even see here, this is the body of our message really. Um, because I can't see anywhere else where we're, see we're seeing more. So th we might put you know, sort of in here, put a different a different message in. So we'll just put in message for the moment. Um, and we'll send it. And we'll see what the response is. So we seem to be getting an okay. Um, so it seems to have worked. So for that assumption, hopefully this then has sent the email. So we know that we have to wait a little bit for it to work. So we shouldn't just sit and, and wait. But let's test some more things in the meantime. So we think this might be... If we go to two, send an email, question mark, because we're not sure yet. We might go back to target, and again, we're looking here, move a message, okay. So we'll send to repeater, and we might be looking at this and say, okay, we've got message select this ID. So that might be the ID of the message. So we might say, okay, maybe we can change that to a different message ID. And then move another, um, move another message. So we'll go to HTTP history. This shows us our request organized by time. Because what we want to do is we want to get the ID of another email. So let's look at this one. And go here. Um, and based on this, we can see this is read flag update. So this is likely a uh, way to read messages. And we can go here and we can see that we've got select another ID. So we'll go to this one. Oh, not copy to file, just copy it. And maybe we'll, maybe we'll just take the at select, just in case we don't know which part is the ID yet. So back to repeater and just go at select and replace it with the one we got from the other mess, the other uh, request. Send it and it seems to have gone okay. It does say, oh, 204. So it hasn't worked. Um, so maybe we haven't got the right request in there, maybe we haven't got the right ID with it. So we might go back and say, okay, what's different about this one? Maybe we need this entire string. Um, maybe we need everything. So go back here, go back up, up here to repeater and copy everything from the at ID. Yeah, I'm just checking that I'm actually uh, copying the right one. And maybe send that and see if that works. So that's then giving us a 400. So something's not right there. But we can see that one of them has moved. So we've, able, we've been able to move a uh, folder, an uh, email to a folder. Um, and we can see whether or not that we're able to send one. So we've got some messages in there, but not quite what we were looking for. Um, so we might say, you know, this does something, but we're not quite sure yet. And the point of labeling these tabs is to just get an idea of how an application works. And we can link um, the request to the business logic. Um, and this is how you use repeater. You know, we're at the moment, we're messing about with this part here. But actually, we might want to also go up here and go, okay, can I hit different messages? What happens if I change the hash? What's a YM request ID? What if I change that? What if I change an app ID? What if I log into two accounts? Can I access another one's emails, for example? Um, you know, what, what's the difference here? What am I looking at? Uh, and that's primarily how you use Repeater. I mean, it's not a very difficult tool to use. A lot of what you do is more in your head rather than in a tool. It's a lot of it's, it's picking the right request to repeat. Um, it's figuring out what to change and how to change it and it's labeling what does work and what doesn't work and you know from that it's saying okay this creates a folder is there an idol there so i know this creates a folder can i use this on another account creating a folder on somebody else's account and there's our security vulnerability and you know to do that we're going to be looking at just going to the cookies and replacing the cookies with another account and if it works then we know that 
we've got an idol. If we just remove the cookies, we can try that. And we can see we've got an error, so there's probably not a bug there. So this is kind of how you use repeater. So I'm going to go back to the slides now. Um, and we can talk about the differences between repeater and intruder and when you should use them. So I'm just going to get that all set up, so I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is when to use repeater and when to use intercept. Now, there is a difference between repeater and intercept. Repeater is a lot easier to use because you're not having to forward every single request. Um, and you can go back and see requests that were in the past. Now, intercept should be used when you're dealing with stuff like CSRF tokens, where it will tell you that your token has expired. So basically, if repeater gives you errors, switch over to intercept. Intercept can be really annoying as you have to forward all the requests. So repeater is, in general, easier to use. Um, one use of repeater might be to uh, figure out which what's doing what when you click a button, right? How many requests it's sending. But actually, when it comes to figuring out how to hack things, you might want to be switching over to repeater. And so thank you very much for watching But For Beginners, how to use repeater. I hope you found this kind of interesting or useful. Repeater is not the most interesting tool Burp has, but it's certainly the most important. And actually quite a lot of the time you don't spend it in repeater, you spend it slightly modifying requests. So again, I'd like to say thank you very much to Integrity for sponsoring this video. Um, you can go to my link, go.integrity.com forward slash Katie. It's on the screen right now. Um, so please do sign up. Please do support the people who support my channel because it, it means a lot to me. It means I can continue to make videos even better. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.